So one of the things that we wanted to have a look at was um, some solar um, and um, we've bought this little kit from Amazon. It's a 100 watt panel in a case, um, come complete with a charge controller and um, a series of cables. So we're not, um, we're not experts in any of this at all. Um, the charge controller I believe is a PWM charge controller rather than an MPPT. Um, and I understand that the MPPT ones are slightly better. However, for, for what we're doing with this, which is just really buying us a couple of extra um, days, I suppose, at anchor, um, or just keeping our batteries just topped up a little bit more while we are at anchor, um, we, we thought that this sort of kit would, would be okay. And actually, quite impressed with the quality. You can see with the connectors, um, they're using these XT60 connectors, and that's that's not a bad connector to use. This is not so good. This is the connector that actually connects to the solar panel itself. Um, so they could use some some better quality ones of those. There are things like this type of connector which are waterproof. Um, I'm not really sure whether this kit can actually stay out in all conditions, but uh, we'll see. Um, you get a bag of uh, other little connectors so you can connect directly to your battery. Um, and you get a number of different sort of uh, jack type connectors pretty decent manual um explaining all, everything what the charge controller can do and all the different settings and things um and they they pack the 10 amp one with this kit so we should have a couple of the panels themselves it's quite a nice bag with it it weighs i think 2.5 kilograms as a kit so we just open that up so you're getting 250 uh, watt panels in the kit, so 100 watts total. And again, seem to be of pretty good quality. I quite like the fact that it's, you know, it folds down and we can we can obviously store that a bit better and they're very, very thin and they are really light actually. So I'm going to connect it up to the house bank now. I've turned the charger off, so we're actually getting a little bit of draw. There's, there's not a lot on because there's only myself here at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, we'll see if it, it can um, put some power into that. I, I did try it at home. Um, on a small battery and it was charging at about sort of two amps but I think the battery was pretty full and um, where here we've got a much bigger battery bank so hopefully we'll see it put maybe five amps into that if it can do that sort of thing that'll be really good because that will definitely keep up with our sort of current draw when we're, we're at anchor and um, even probably power the fridge at that um, which is good I mean it'll certainly buy some extra time so so that's the plan I'm going to just uh, get this set up and um, we'll see what um, see what it does so for this just very short experiment, I've got the negative here going through the shunt so I can see the draw or the charge. Um, and then I've got the positive just on the positive terminal of the battery. Um, and then we can just plug this end into the charge controller. Okay, so we're plugged into the charge controller and you can see basically that's reporting 12.9 volts. Which is the same as the... Um, Victron smart shunt. So I've just plugged the solar panel in now and um, the voltage has jumped up to 13.1. So we can scroll through this uh, panel here with this button and it's generating 3.3 .3 amps at the moment. So the settings for the type of battery, the output, when it will cut off because you can plug something into this bottom corner here into this um and um, you can control basically when that comes on so if you you know things like lights or whatever if it's out somewhere um you can control how long that stays on and when it when it disconnects that from the battery so if the battery starts getting flat you don't actually drain your battery at all um so yeah so we we'll just see three and a half amps so we we'll just see how that does it's not perfectly placed um, we could probably get a little bit more out of it than that because um, it's just lying on the deck at the moment sort of kind of facing the sun um, but that's pretty good the yeah, cable's just going up through the window at the moment so we'll have to do a proper job but I just wanted to test it really before I sort of fitted it and did anything else and as you can see here now we've gone from negative which we were drawing about I think about an amp um, which would be about, about right maybe an amp and a half and we've gone to two amps Battery voltage is slowly creeping up. So I've managed to get a little bit of shading off the panel. I've actually got 4.2 amps now. 
battery voltage is still coming up, that's good. And we have this isotherm AFU unit and I think how this tries to work is if there's excess voltage um, or power when like when the engine's running or when the charge on it actually freezes the uh, the plate that's uh, in in the fridge it seems to work really well um when you then anchor it then releases the energy from the plate into the fridge and um then moves to like a, an economy mode where it just sort of comes on and just tries to maintain the temperature obviously then as soon as you start the engine oil um you're back on power or whatever it would then freeze the plate and it's actually starting to to freeze now so we've, we've obviously hit enough um, voltage for that to be detected It'd be interesting to see if that keeps cycling on and off or it um it's able to maintain it but yeah it's just fired up again that doesn't like that because it keeps clicking on and off all the time so i'm going to actually switch that to to uh manual and that will stop it coming on and off because it's uh it's not happy it's starting and then it's stopping i guess it's just pulling the voltage down just a little bit too much for the unit to understand what's going on and um, so we'll stick that on manual for now um, and, and stop that switching on and off every five seconds you can actually see the fridge here trying to start uh, so you can see the the panel being plugged in um, and then you can see it trying to start the fridge so the voltage is coming up and up so maybe after a little while that will actually settle down but um, just for now we'll leave it on manual a few of my connectors have now arrived for the um, solar panel uh, project. Um, these uh, XTs, XT60, so this is what is actually on the uh, end of the charge controller. Um, so I've um, got a couple of these, I'm going to have to solder these. So that'll allow me to put the charge controller where I want and extend the cables for that. And then these connectors this side, uh, I think they're Pro Prolec. Um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link in. Um, but similar to, I think it's a, like a Buccaneer type connector. Um, which are fully waterproof so nice thing with these is they come complete with the caps so i'm just going to mount that one in the boat so that one will be uh fixed uh, on the boat itself and then this one will go on the end of the um solar panel cable so that I can just um plug in as and when i need to but again both got caps on them um, and then fully waterproof when they're connected together so um yeah look pretty good um I think these were about two to three pounds a piece um rather than around 11 pounds for the for the other type the, the buccaneer type So here's the connector now with the uh, nut and the uh, washer taken off and that should just fit into the hole and then what we'll do is we'll go round the back and fix that on um, once we've done the soldering and everything else but that, that's basically how it'll go with a little cap on it so it should be quite well protected there really you shouldn't have knock that you can't get too close I mean this all needs fixing anyway but you can't get too close to that really the clear of the pump so we should be good there the cable's in now, it's this one here, and it's labelled as well. I've actually pulled another cable uh, through while I was doing that, but I'll, I'll tell you what that's about later. And then it comes through here, into this bunch of cables, and then basically that's the lock of the other side. There's quite a lot of space in here, there's, there's loads of bits and bobs. The um, Wabasto, or Eberspatch is in here, heater, um, hot water pipe work, um, bilge pumps, here's the exhaust. So while I was in here, I have also sorted that bracket out up there because this was making like a rattling or a banging sound and it was just a bit loose here. So that's nice and tight again now. So I've just done that while I was in there. Um, I did one other job as well, but I can't remember what that was. Um, oh yeah, that's it, I remember. So if you remember, we replaced the wet locker um, or the exhaust muffler, whatever you want to call it, and I fixed had a temporary bracket so I, I did the bracket a little while ago and then it's just been basically sat on that so I've just put a bit of cord shot cord to hold that it hasn't actually moved in that whole journey that we've just done um, so it's definitely not come, gonna come loose and it can't come out now so I just did that as well so we've gone 
then on this boat it then goes back through into the lock again the other side and then it pops out the back of the toilet so i've done a couple of cables now for the solar project so this is a kit that you get with the panel we've got basically a cable to connect it to the battery um, an extension cable for the solar panel itself and a series of connectors for using the output basically on on here so i've put a new um, waterproof socket into the boat ready so this is the other end of that and what i've done at the moment is i've just made a temporary lead up so that i can connect it into this extension lead and connect to the solar panel i will at some point change this and i'll probably change this connector on the end i'm not sure yet but this isn't long enough so th this this little section needs to be um, redone at some point when we actually know exactly where we're going to position it because it seemed to work best from the recent test on the actual coach roof so this needs to be a lot longer and i don't really want separate cables so as i say i will at some point make one very long cable for this bit but for now this gets me from the boat to the end of this connect this up to here and then into the solar panel on this side so that i can connect it up to the uh, battery um, I've made a lead here that will go into the battery part of, of this, so the input. And then the other end of this, I'm putting a fuse in. So this is uh, going to be wired uh, into the boat. So this will be connected on the switch side, so that when we do turn the batteries off, this is also isolated. It's also got a fuse as well. I did open this up and have a look in the back. So here's a couple of uh, shots of what's actually in there and i may I may end up upgrading this to something like a blue c1 um but we'll see how we go for now it seems to perform fairly well so um this is all what we need to get everything back up and running and um, we'll connect it all back up and show it working i've now wired my um, solar panel uh in um, to power i've just been doing a little bit of tidying up in general in here these clips here if anybody's got a bavaria yacht they are these mate and lock type clips i'll put a link in the description so if you want to actually wire directly into this plug rather than doing what other people have done and to try and sort of pick it back off things um that's what they are so i've tidied a couple of wires of our tvs now in properly and our raspberry pi and things they're now in there properly um, but what I've done for the solar for the time being, because I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep this controller. So the controller is just here. A little bit of tidying up to do in here yet. Again, you can see people just pulled wires through at times, but we'll sort that out at some point. These, this is just loose. This is just going to sit here for now. And basically it's on one of the fuse switches. So if I turn this, there we go. So I'm going to leave it like that for now until I decide what I'm going to actually do with this controller. Um, but I've just put the battery wire through that's here this one and it's just um onto the negative bus but again there's a couple of little bits there that just need uh, a little bit of looking at because they're not quite right um yep so that means i don't need this so i can keep that now um, and then as i say i'm going to do a little bit more testing with the solar and see how i go these cables here are the ones that are coming through from the locker in the back that we put in the other week so i'm going to just shorten that now wire that into the solar panel and sort of leave it there for now and fire it up and see how we get on. We've put the solar panels out. So, um, hopefully they'll uh, charge your batteries up. I've taken a couple of screenshots of what the batteries were this morning um, and I've just plugged those in. So hopefully they'll boost us back up. They did yesterday, so we did a little bit of a test with them yesterday just to see how well they were gonna perform when we uh, sort of um, we were settling down and we were turning things on like 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night. And we got full batteries, which was really good. 